All right, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys uh, my portable water system for overlanding uh, that I've got set up. This is becoming quite a popular setup and I can see why it works really well. It's uh, essentially air goes in here, you fill it up with water, it's black so it absorbs the sun and then water comes out here into whatever attachment you wanna put on for a garden hose. Uh, this is essentially what it does. It's really nice for washing pots, pans, taking a shower, what have you, and uh, test plugs, you can clean it out. So I'll show you guys how it's done. Nateness TV, it's time for a DIY. So just to let you guys know right off, I'll put a list of everything needed below. Now this is a half inch MIP boiler drain. Pick them up for four bucks at a hardware store. And this will go directly into the four inch ABS cap. This is a two part epoxy putty. You can pick this up from any hardware store. This is what I'm gonna to use to make the connection between the boiler drain and the cap. Now I've bought special fittings to make this connection, but I've found that this two part epoxy putty works better than anything. It's quick, easy, and it's way cheaper. Once you get that boiler drain in there, then you're ready to hook up your garden hose. So I've got everything laid out here. This is kind of the design that I came up with that was gonna fit my truck the best. Now every vehicle's different, so measure out your vehicle and decide how long you want it to be. This is a tire Schrader valve that I've got from O'Reilly's. You pick these up for a few bucks. And this is how I'm gonna get air into the system to pressurize it. I chose to put the air valve at the top of my system. So that would be where the water fill is, right on the top of the cap. So now I need to make some cuts so I can start gluing this thing together. So I want this four inch cap to go right over this T. To do that, I need a little piece of four inch pipe to go in there to hold them together. So I mark it and head over to the saw. I'm not a plumber, so I don't know if this is what plumbers do, but I like using a chop saw because it gives it a nice, clean, straight edge. Once your cuts are made, make sure to clean everything up with some sandpaper to make sure there's no burrs left on your pipe. You're not going to want burrs all over the place when you're trying to glue things together. And this is the ABS cement or glue that I was using to glue everything together. Then I think I was saying something about don't breathe this deep, you know, because it stinks really bad. Then you take your stepper bit. I'll show the bit set that I have uh, that I got off of Amazon. It works really well. And you kind of go at it from both sides. Drill from the top, flip it over, go from the bottom. That way you're getting a good even hole since the stepper bit is cone shaped. Now you don't want your hole any bigger than it has to be. You want it just big enough for the boiler drain to fit in there. So here's that two part epoxy putty I was telling you about. It's actually called Marine Weld. Make sure you wear some gloves so it doesn't get on your skin. Once you start feeling it warm up, then you know it's starting to activate and it's ready to put on. Hopefully you don't have a crotch shot in there. <laughs> Pan down. <laughs> Once the putty is activated, you go ahead and pack it around the back side of that boiler drain. Make sure you use plenty and make sure that you really press it in there and get it in all the nooks and crannies. Once that's all packed in there, I'm going to let it sit before I start on the top side here. It's a good idea to let it cure to where you're not uh, ruining that bond that it's making on the other side. Well, that's the drying, I'm going to go ahead and start gluing things together. I'm going to 
use a test plug to seal up the end to where if I ever have to get in there and clean things out, it's an easy way to do it. And it's pretty cheap too. How test plugs work is you crank down on that wing nut on the top and it expands the rubber and makes it where you, you can't pull it out. So here I'm just testing that out to make sure it's working right. It's always a good idea to put a rag down or something when you're gluing stuff together with ABS cement. The stuff is pretty sticky and pretty nasty. Test plugs in, we're good to go. Now, it looks like this stuff here is cured up pretty good. You push on it and it's really hard. You can't even make an indent with your fingernail. So I'm ready to start putting that marine weld epoxy putty on the top side. You might have a hard time getting it up underneath where the water comes out, but just get a screwdriver and jam it down underneath there really good. Before the marine weld sets up, be sure and put the hose that you're going to use on there to make sure that everything fits. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and glue on the water fill hole. When you're applying the ABS cement, make sure that you get it all the way around whatever the fitting is on both sides. So both pieces of what you're working on need to have lots of ABS cement on it. If it drips, it's okay. We're not professionals here. i found that it's better to have too much than not enough. If you watch close, you'll notice that I put cement on one piece but forgot to put it on the other. Now, it ended up fighting me when I tried sliding them together. There wasn't enough cement for everything to slide together easily. So Luckily, it held together fine, it had 80 PSI in there later on, and it was fine. This part of things is so small, I really can't show you with the camera that we have here. But here's a picture of it. It's it's called a valve inner mount, and this is what we're going to hook our airline up to to pressurize this system. Uh, if you hop on O'Reilly's website and look up valve inner mount 716 inch, you'll find it. It's, it's really cheap, it's a few bucks. And what you want to do is you want to drill a hole just big enough for the metal part of the valve to slide through. And then you just have to make sure that there's a rubber gasket, a washer, and a nut on both sides. So as you tighten down one side, it compresses that rubber gasket and will keep any air or water from leaking out. Now I decided to mount mine on the top of the fill cap. And I think that's a good spot to mount it because it's got a flat surface so it's got a good seal and connection. Your two inch fill plug and it's got pretty coarse thread so you want to make sure to really put some good thread tape on it because you're dealing with water I prefer the thread tape over the pipe dope uh, so that's what I would recommend all right our two-part epoxy marine weld is set up so now I'm going to take that piece that I cut earlier and go ahead and put these two pieces together put the cap on with the hose bib or the boiler drain whatever you want to call it
right there we have it. Now we just have to get it all mounted up on the truck. <laughs> I swear, like, as soon as we get done, it's like pouring down rain. Well, it's not in that big of a rush. Looks like a bazooka. All right, I'm going in the rain anyways. This is how it is here in this state. about like that. Oh, it looks so BA. All right. So all of the mounts are like ridiculously expensive. So I went to the store and I got these. These are called two hole strap for a four inch pipe. If you go into any electrical store, they'll know what that is. If you just say two hole strap for a four inch pipe, and then you can just take it right over top and then you can just go right into your rack so I'm gonna cut some rubber strips and wrap it around with some super glue on the four inch pipe so that if there's any chafing that happens it's gonna have that rubber there to protect it I use two seven inch hose clamps to hold the rubber in place while the super glue is setting up. After the super glue dries for about five minutes, go ahead and take the clamps off. All right, clamps are on. Everything's super glued. These are one half to three quarter inch ground rod clamps. You can find these in the electrical section at any hardware store. And they work perfect for clamping on round bar roof racks. Super cheap. And this is what the two hole four inch pipe clamp is gonna bolt right into. Looks like a bazooka. Dude, that's the next thing we should build. <laughs> Oh, a potato gun or something. <laughs> what else could we launch besides potatoes? I feel like there's been a lot of people doing potatoes. Could you build one strong enough to like shoot rocks? I was wondering like what other kind of food? Maybe like a carrot gun? Carrot gun. Carrots are too good. I like carrots. Brussels sprouts? Brussels sprout gun. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? Brussels sprout gun? If you want, you can comment below. And if you thought this was helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Nateness TV. It's just my life.